Next, let's go over group calculations, meaning that in the previous training video, we learned how to add calculated fields. What if you have a field that has a total that you'd like to get for, let's say, all of the pay that we're paying out to all of our employees, for example? In the previous training video, we worked on pay rates. Well, weekly pay is no different. I just basically saved it as the query pay rates as weekly pay. So I opened it up, double clicked, I went and clicked on the office logo button, came down, clicked on save as, changed the name, said that you're still a query, and I changed it to weekly pay. So let me click cancel, see there it is, close out, and it looks the same as my weekly pay. Now the reason why I do that is because I have this query for my pay rates, this query, I want to pull up the same information, but also maybe make some changes to it, and call it again my weekly info or weekly pay. Because in my weekly pay, I don't want the hours. In other words, what I want to do is I want to figure out what the total is for the weekly gross that as a company we're paying out to all of our employees. So to do that, to be able to do what's called group calculations, I want to click and go to my design view. And up at the top on the its related contextual design tab, the query tools, I'm going to come over here to the show hide group and click on the totals button. Once I click on it, it does two things. First of all, down at the bottom, it adds a totals row. And that total row, do you see how it says group by, group by, group by? Well, this isn't going to work for some of these fields. What group by means is that it's going to group all the employees. If they're duplicates, it's going to hold them to a group. So all the, the employees with the last name is Smith are going to be grouped together. Then it's going to group by all those within the Smiths, if they have the same first names together, and then all the departments together, and then all the uh, hours together. In other words, this is a two-pronged problem that we have here when we start doing our totals. It's going to say, first of all, what fields do you want to group by? And then after we group those fields, what fields do you want to get the totals for? Well, I do not want to group the last name and first name, so I'm going to go ahead and click and drag again. Let me hover over just the column header, that little gray bar up at the top. I get a black down arrow. When I click on it, it selects the whole column. Then without letting go of my mouse, I can click and drag to the right until I select both columns. I'm going to delete those. So again, I'm not worried or concerned in this query about the employees. I'm concerned about how much we're paying out on a weekly basis to all of our employees. So again, their names don't matter. And plus, even if they did, it wouldn't bode very well trying to group them all by last name and then by first name. Another thing is, is that I don't really want the hourly rate. That's of no concern to me. I mean, how many hours the employees are putting in per week. Maybe it would be um, interesting for another presentation to stockholders or management, but for right now I'm going to click on that and delete that as well. So here's what it comes down to. I have my weekly hours and I have the weekly gross. I want to group them by department name. So all the departments are going to be grouped together, the human resources, um, IT department, all the departments I have. But when it comes to the weekly hours, I want the total. So I'm going to change and click on this drop down arrow and say I want the sum total of my weekly hours. Or how about if we just do the average, you know, what the average employee works a week at our company. But for the gross, I do want the total that we're paying out at the end of the week here. And then when I'm finished, I can just go ahead and click on the run button. You see these pound signs? You would learn this in my Excel Level 1 training video, but that means that there's more information than actually fits within that cell. So again, you can move your mouse between the two column headers and double-click really fast and it expands it. Okay, so we group this by department. We've got customer service, human resources, IT, maintenance, and sales. Well, if I didn't want them to by department, I could delete it, and in which case I would just get the total here. Let's go back to our design view. Let me go ahead and delete the department, click on the run button, then I just get my totals. But maybe I want them broken down by department. So I go back to my design view. I come up here and I double click on the department name. So it's back to group by. Now department name I liked it at the beginning of my data sheet view when I clicked on the run button. So I can go ahead and click to select the whole column. Then I'm going to click again on that column header and hold down my left mouse button. And then I'm going to drag over to the left and let go. So again, it adds the group by field so I can group them by department, get the total, get the sums. Now, I'm running into a problem here because when I click on the run button, I get 0.27, I mean, a huge decimal place. I don't like that. So my average for the weekly hours maybe just ought to go out to one decimal place. So I'm going to go back to my design view here. And if I want to change the properties of the display, you know, the formatting, I want to go ahead and click in the weekly hours field here and I want to bring up the property sheet. You can do it one of two ways. You can right click on the field and go down to properties or just click in there and go up to its related tab, the design tab, to the show high group and click on the property sheet. Come up here, click in the format field, click on the drop down arrow and say I would like it fixed. In fact, when I click on fixed, when I click on the drop down arrow I can scroll over and see what that means for fixed. 
gosh, it looks like it's one, two, three, four. In fact, you know what I can do is I can click and drag to stretch this property out here. And then click on the drop down arrow and say, see how it's fixed. Let's go ahead and select that. Of course, I can always click and drag to push that back in, right? Close out. Let's click on the run button. It's fixed. Now it's fixed to two decimal places because that was the default. If I go back to the design view, come back here, go back to the same field, right click on it, go back to the properties again, and say the decimal places that I want to. I just, if I want any, I may want just one. So I'll click in the decimal places field, click on the drop down arrow. I could say zero or just go to one decimal place. Close out, click on the run button there. That looks a little bit better than two decimal places. 36 and a half hours for the sales department is the average amount of hours that people in that department work. And then when you're done, be sure to go ahead and save your work. Click on the save button. And if you would like another one that doesn't have it by department, just the total dollar amount for all the departments, then we want to go back to the design view again, what we did before, delete the department name. And then instead of saving it, because we still want to keep our weekly pay by department, maybe we should rename this query weekly pay department by department. But we want to come up, click on the office logo, click on save as, type over the name up at the top we see here, QRY, and we can say weekly or totals. Make sure it's still as a query, then click OK. Adds it down here, weekly totals. Now I can close out. I've got two different queries. Weekly totals gives me just the totals for the whole week, what the average of all the departments work, of all the employees. Then I can double click on the weekly pay and say, well, by department, it looks like uh, customer service isn't working all that much. Of course, when I click in, it also pulls up all the decimal places. But again, when I click out, it brings it back down to just one decimal place. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.